Okay, so now that we have um, looked at this um, W stochastic matrices, uh, we looked at the stationary distribution of two different um, but linearly structured uh, uh, random blocks. Let's uh, generalize now to arbitrary graphs. Um, let's uh, recall one thing that we already looked at in the lectures on uh, random blocks. We uh, proved that um, we first of all define something called the cover time, and uh, the cover time is basically the uh, maximum now over all the possible starting vertices S. So that's the set of all, V is the set of all vertices. Uh, the expected time for a random walk to visit all nodes starting from S. So, um, so now if you have a graph. And uh, this is one candidate's uh, one vertex. Uh, start a random walk from that uh, vertex, and you ask what is the expected uh, time to cover or, or or see or touch all other uh, vertices. So, but that would be just for that one vertex. Now, what you'd have to do is consider that expected time for all vertices, and then uh, take the maximum over all the vertices, and that would be the cover time. And um, uh, in the lecture, we actually showed that uh, the cover time uh, for a non-bipartite graph is uh, is at most 4mn, which is uh, nothing but O of uh, uh, n cubed, where n is the number of uh, vertices and m is the number of uh, edges. Um, and if you recall, the key intuition uh, for the proof was to look at this graph and um, uh, so here, if you look at an edge in this graph, uh, and let's say this is vertex U and this is vertex V, the exp uh, and now let's say you start a random walk from U, uh, what we first showed was that the, um, the expected time for a random walk to go from U to V is at most uh, 2M. Uh, <coughs> and then to complete the proof, uh, what we did was um, uh, <coughs> we con uh, considered a um, uh, spanning tree of this graph and then we argued that uh, we could cover the spanning tree in um, at most 4mn uh, time steps. So that was um, uh, and we used, uh, if you recall, we used linearity of expectation um, to do that. Now the interesting question, uh, and this is a question based on exercise 7.24 of the um, Mitzen, Marker, and Upfall uh, textbook. Um, so we know that the upper bound on the expected running uh, our cover time is O of n cubed. Uh, and uh, if you look at, for example, the complete graph on... on um, um, the complete graph on n uh, vertices, the cover time there is uh, just O of n log n. So some graphs have very high cover time, uh, very fast cover time. Um, and this, if you recall, um, you may want to uh, prove that this is in fact uh, uh, correct. And I just want to remind you that this is uh, somehow connected to the coupon collectors uh, problem. So. Uh, with that being the case, uh, the obvious question now is, is O of n cubed upper bound of the cover time really tight? Uh, in other words, is there some bad graph for which the cover time is indeed uh, big omega of n cubed? Um, and as, as it turns out, uh, it is in fact uh, tight. And interestingly, the, um, the graph that um, uh, displays such a large cover type has this uh, very nice uh, structure. It's called the uh, lollipop uh, graph. The lollipop graph has um, uh, two parts to it. There is the um, the complete graph part, which is especially in um, about half the vertices are all completely connected to each other. So this is the the uh, k n n by two. And then <coughs> we have um, the handle of the lollipop, which is another n by 2 vertices, but now connected linearly. Now, uh, let's try to think about why this is, in fact, the case. Now, 
let's for the moment ignore um, the uh, uh, the complete graph part of the lollipop. Uh, and one way to do that is just say that uh, let's say you start a random walk at this vertex v, and you ask, okay, how long does that random walk take to reach uh, you? And this is a question that we've already discussed in the lecture, and that uh, recall will take theta of n squared. Okay, so um, on on expectation, of course. So now, um, wh why does the whole graph? Um, so, for example, if you start at uh, v in theta of n squared time, it will reach u. And once it reaches u, um, we already have seen that the complete graph has a cover time of uh, just O of n log n. So once it reaches u, the random walk will fall into this complete graph and, it, and the entire graph will be covered in an extra O of n log n time. So, um, so the question therefore is why are we making this claim? And uh, the reason for that is, uh, is that you know, in the definition of the cover time, you have to not just consider the star any one vertex as a starting point. You should consider every st vertex as a starting point and then uh, compute what is the worst cover time. So let's actually, instead of um, starting at at V, uh, let's start at some vertex um, uh, inside uh, the complete graph part. Okay, so let this be our starting vertex S. Now, uh, what will happen is that the, um, uh, this, um, uh, this random walk will start uh, walking around this graph and it at some point it will have to come to you okay, and then uh, somehow make its way uh, all the way to B. Uh, what makes this challenging is the following. So if it comes to you, uh, then there's a, actually a good chance that it will fall back into the uh, into this uh, complete graph part. So as long as it's inside this complete graph part, it's going to be making random walk steps inside of this region. And only with probability 1 over n, it's going to come to this uh, vertex n. And then <coughs> from this vertex, it, even if it were to make a few, tra a say a transition like this, then with some good probability it will come back here and then it could still fall into this um, uh, complete graph part. So the random walk in some sense um, can easily get stuck in this complete graph part and then it it's, takes a lot of effort for it to leave this complete graph part and then move all the way to uh, v. Even if it were to make a few transitions, it could with some reasonable probability and you can think about it intuitively. And I also encourage you to write a small program to actually verify what I'm cl uh, claiming here. It could uh, then easily fall back in here. So really to work its way all the way to v is uh, takes some effort and that's where um, this uh, big omega of n cubed uh, comes in. Uh, so let me give you a little little bit uh, more intuition as to uh, why this is actually uh, n cubed. So now, as uh, uh, just assume that we are um, starting at s. Uh, well, actually, let's let's uh, not let's not do that. Let's in fact um, ask ourselves uh, consider what happens when we say uh, are here. Suppose we started at s and we've reached over here. Uh, now we want to know what is the probability that this random walk that has reached this vertex, let's call this vertex uh, u prime, let's call this u, this is v, uh, what is the probability that the random walk will reach v before it reaches u? So the event we are uh, interested in is, um, so the random walk starting at u prime reaches v before uh, reaching um, the vertex u. Uh, so, and we are interested in understanding this probability. Okay. Now, uh, this can be actually understood reasonably e easily. It, it takes a little bit of um, effort to see, I mean, not effort, but um, just a little bit of thought to see this intuition. Now, from u, 
uh, you're equally likely to uh, go from um, u to u. Uh, uh, let's consider this as u double prime. From u, uh, let's see uh, whether we will reach u first or u double prime first. And that's a symmetric random walk. So in, uh, uh, these are two symmetric events, so the, their probabilities are equal. And so with probability half, uh, the random walk will reach u prime. Okay. Now that you've reached u prime, uh, now ask the question, will we reach u first or will we reach um, this vertex, say u uh, star? Okay. And this again, uh, these are two symmetric uh, events, uh, the event of reaching u or the event of reaching u, prime, uh, u star. So um, that again, the probability that you go here before you go to u is again another uh, half. So, um, so what, what you can see is that with uh, um, probability half you will reach u double prime before u and after having reached u double prime with another probability half you would reach u star before you reach u and so on and so forth if you think a little bit and work out the mathematics you will realize that um, uh, with probability 1 by 2 raised to the something like uh, log n by 2 uh, you will reach V before you reach uh, U. And uh, working through that uh, should help you uh, reach this goal of uh, showing that the cover time for this graph is in fact uh, big omega of uh, uh, N cubed.